Americans hold ambivalent opinions about leaders. While we readily applaud leaders whom we presume to be good, we are never quite certain how to identify and certify good candidates for leadership. Endorsements by influential figures or organizations no longer seem to carry much weight for us. Unfounded rumors and sensational reports and tabloids or unfounded social media sources seem to be considered by us to be more important. John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Judeans, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. How very different all of the four canonical Gospels are, especially the one from outer space, the maverick Gospel called John. 21st century Christians are so spuriously familiar with the account in Acts, where the Holy Spirit is poured out at Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, that they usually completely miss the account of the giving of the Holy Spirit to the disciples in the fourth Gospel called John, which happens not 50 days after Easter, but on the very first night following Jesus' resurrection. My friends, if you are treating the Gospels as modern biographies, you are in for quite a shocking disappointment. <laughs> Our Mediterranean ancestors in the faith took a different view of leadership and leaders than we Americans do. For one thing, a legitimate leader in the Mediterranean world had to be suitably installed as a leader. This Sunday's Gospel narrative contains the major elements of a Mediterranean vocation commissioning event, a literary form that is commonly used in the Bible to authenticate different kinds of leaders. With installing a Mediterranean leader, there must be an introduction and a commissioning. We see an introduction here in this story. Confronting bewildered disciples in a locked room, the risen Jesus reassures them with a word and a gesture. The word is peace and the gesture is his displaying his pierced hands and side. He's not a ghost, but is alive, risen. And then comes the commissioning. The risen Johannine Jesus commissions his disciples after the pattern of his own commissioning by the Father, the patron God of Israel. The commission is, one, formal. Two, sealed by the gift of the Holy Spirit. And three, involves preaching repentance and forgiveness of sins. Everywhere in our Mediterranean library we call Bible, the word sin means dishonoring God, shaming God. In the fourth gospel called John, this shaming God, this dishonoring God, sin, specifically means failing to believe into Jesus as the one the Father has sent. Hence, this commissioning is best interpreted as charging these new leaders to the Johannine Jesus group to bring new members into this community. It differs from the traditional understanding of forgiveness of sin as found in the Synoptic Gospels, particularly Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, which describes how the community at that time, sometime in the 80s or 90s, deals with the sinfulness of its present members. In the Mediterranean world, a person who has a grievance realizes that personal efforts by an individual acting alone are futile. Only groups wield power in the Mediterranean world of the Bible. Hence, an aggrieved person gathers together a group of sympathetic followers who have similar grievances. Such a group or coalition is called a faction. This group of aggrieved individuals believe that only by acting in unison will they be able to accomplish that which is impossible for a single one of them to accomplish alone. From a cultural viewpoint, this is the most plausible explanation for the way the Mediterranean Galilean peasant artisan Jesus called and attracted his followers. He was assembling a political faction, the Jesus Movement.
In the gospel storyline, Jesus established and strengthened his credibility by winning every argument with his opponents. No matter how often people tried to trick him up or trip him up or publicly humiliate him, always the Johannine Jesus comes out on top. His honorable reputation and his credibility grows throughout the storyline. Never once is he dishonored, never once does he publicly fall on his face, never once is he shamed until his death. Crucified, just like and between two common criminals, Jesus suddenly seems to be overcome by the deepest possible cultural shame. Until his resurrection. Then it becomes clear that the God of Israel is indeed pleased with this beloved son. For by raising him from the dead, God has honored him far more than any human accolades ever could. All these ideas stand behind the Johannine Jesus statement, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. In the ancient and contemporary Mediterranean world, people believe in a huge, diverse, and very real spirit world. Very real and very dangerous. Apocryphal books contemporary with New Testament times identify and name scores of spirits. Some are good, some are evil, and plenty are mischievous. Some of these books even prescribe remedies, formulas, and talismans for protection against them. It is difficult for modern scientifically minded American believers and all Western believers to appreciate the conviction by our ancestors in the faith that these spirits teeming around them in the air around them were very powerful for both good and ill. The gospel called Luke, for instance, is filled with many references to diverse spirit activity. The village peasant girl Mary becomes pregnant by the power of a spirit. Peter's mother-in-law suffers from a spirit named fever. The stooped-over woman had a spirit of infirmity and was bound by the spirit Satan for 18 years, and on and on. That these newly commissioned disciples would be gifted with a very powerful other-than-human person, a very powerful spirit, the Holy Spirit, only guaranteed their efficaciousness. Any 1st or 2nd century Mediterranean native who heard or read this Sunday's gospel would respect and accept these disciples as legitimate, honorable, and effective ministers commissioned by none other than Jesus, who had received from his Father the highest of honors, risen sky vault life. This Sunday's gospel challenges us American Christians to reconsider how we select and evaluate leaders, both spiritual leaders and secular leaders.